Hello and welcome to the show. This week's at Fail Race of Verge of the Community, we were to go racing with A Class 4 Wheel Drive Cars. Our first track, we would go to the Brands Hatch GP circuit as a Ferrari can't quite get his car stopped into the first corner. There are many people going two and three wide out of turn one and on the run into turn two. My, my little Renault got stuck on the outside. A number of cars uh, were stuck trying to go the long way uh, around people. But amazingly, on the whole, we actually had a pretty damn clean start. There are a few bumps, a few scrapes, but uh, there's somebody off in the background. But on the most part, it was a pretty clean start to uh, to this particular particular race. Now, Brands Hatch actually struggled to build cars for uh, for Brands Hatch. I tried to build the Dodge Dart. I couldn't get it to work. However, there were some very, very fast ones in this lobby. As the particular group of cars here, the Dart breezes through a gap in between two Subarus. The Legacy tries to go around the outside, but he can't really do too much about the huge Dodge. And then he's immediately coming under pressure from an Impreza as they go too wide through the next turn. That's quite a tough place. The corners around Brands Hatch, a bit like Watkins Glen in some respects, very fast corners these ones. There's not a huge amount of braking to be done into these turns and the Legacy holds it around the outside of two corners. In the end I think the Impreza just backed off slightly a little bit too much for the uh, corner which uh, meant the Legacy could uh, keep his position. Yeah overtaking can be a little bit fiddly around this track as I said as turn one and uh, maybe turn two are probably your best bets. The big bigger braking zones for those corners. Yeah but the rest of this the rest of this track there's not a huge amount of braking. Uh, around here. This Maserati Gibble was trying to make his way through the field, gets up alongside a Ford Escort. The Escort's having none of it in the braking zone. The Maserati uh, got, got the more power, got more straight line speed, and as they leave the corner, he tries to deploy uh, all of that. But again, the Escort goes defensive, but when you start going defensive, that tends to make you slow off of the corner, and the Maserati has so much acceleration, you can just fire his car up the inside, and he's past the Ford before they even get to the next corner. Pushing his luck a little bit, <laughs> running out a, a tad wide at a wheel on the grass and again does a similar thing out of the next corner but uh, the escort couldn't do anything about the gibble and uh, yeah the gibble would go on to attack this next group of cars got things very wrong uh, across the curve down there it was a uh, lotus esprit now trying to find a way past the mitsubishi the lotus with the straight line speed tries to have a go up the inside but can't quite get it stopped he overdrives it ever so slightly you see the back end just lets go as he's pushing it through the corner he's across the ground Keeps his foot down though, comes out the other side, he's right back behind the Mitsubishi. Now the Maserati is coming back to join in the fun. The Lotus gets the drive off the corner, but he hits the grass on the inside. That tips the car sideways, which uh, lets the Maserati pass, and the Maserati goes on the attack uh, against the Mitsubishi. Lotus has a big dive into the next corner, just couldn't quite get his car far enough alongside to really do anything about getting past towards the front and this was the battle over second place between a Lexus ISF and a Ferrari Testarossa. An interesting battle of uh, all-wheel drive A-class cars but uh, there we go. Ferrari was trying to have a look around the outside. Ferrari had, was better through the corners however the Lexus had much more in the way of straight line speed and we see despite being ahead as they came into the corner the Ferrari couldn't sort of keep the position as they run around the final turn. Again, it's a relatively quick corner and the Lexus can hold it all the way on the outside and then he's got the straight line speed as they come across the start finish line to maintain that position. Again, we run down through turn one. The Ferrari is having a look at the inside and the Lexus can't quite get across to cover just yet. The Ferrari's sticking his nose there and the Ferrari's up the inside into turn one but the Lexus keeps his car there and now the Lexus has the acceleration out of the corner. That puts him on the inside for this next bit and the <laughs> Ferrari just couldn't quite get a, couldn't quite get a pass done. And uh, yeah, the Lexus has now got himself kind of where he wants to be. He's on the inside defending through here. This is a nasty corner, a very long corner. Not a place you particularly want to be trying to go uh, around the outside. And uh, yeah, the Lexus would maintain his second place and uh, now he's on a little bit of a straight, could drive away from the, uh, the Ferrari. And all the meantime, you could see how much the dark caught them in, those, in that lap exchange between, <laughs> between them two. Yeah, the dark was closing while they were battling like that. 
At the front, though, it was a Nissan Skyline that would go on to take victory. Uh, pretty much buggered off from the uh, from the rest of the field. My Renault 5 was a really quick car. In time trial, it could probably challenge the Skyline. The problem was my Renault was far too difficult to drive. I made a couple of silly mistakes, uh, dropped back through the order, and never had the confidence to push the car again uh, around here. Yeah, I would have liked to have uh, had slightly easier to drive Renault. I might have been able to challenge the Skyline, but the, the Skyline was a mighty, mighty fast car. As second race, we will go to the uh, Indianapolis, I think it's the Grand Prix alternate layout. This is a strange layout of the track, never really driven it much before uh, doing this. It's a peculiar one because it starts in reverse and you go down all sorts of different parts of the track that you don't normally. It is, it's a really, really weird layout, but I quite liked it. It was a bit of a faff to get used to, but uh, I did quite like the layout. At the start, um, there was a little bit of chaos. Unfortunately, my car got completely broken on the first lap, so I had to tour the pit lane. It wasn't going particularly well for my Renault, but the rest of the field, uh, quite a lot of cars made it through okay. A limo started well up the order. Was currently sat in uh, second place, which is not too bad, certainly, uh, for a limo. Although, as you can imagine, it was kind of struggling a little bit coming up against a Mazda Cosmo. The Mazda goes past as they're fighting their way through. Uh, it's a slightly almost strangely redesigned uh, S's bit. And there's a strange rejoin to the oval. It was a pecu <laughs> peculiar layout of, uh, of track, but still quite interesting nonetheless. Camaro we're following got a much better run than an Eclipse, but they were both completely annihilated by a, a GTR that's going flying up the inside. GTR gets three cars on this straight. Again, ignore the tumbling Jeep. That was a ghost lagged out car that's uh, <laughs> just sort of lying around on the uh, the replay. The Camaro tries, he spots a gap up the inside of the Escort, tries to get past, but uh, the Escort just closes the door a little bit. Now the Mitsubishi is uh, finding himself fighting back on the inside. It's almost three wide as we come through here. The limo in the background having difficulties getting turned around these nasty corners. Quite a few cars bumping out wide uh, across the grass, and now we are very much three wide as we come around the bank section and back to rejoining the infield circuit. The Camaro has got the straight line speed. He's past the Escort Escort still continuing to fight back. Then you've got to try and get it slowed. This is a real nasty bugger of a corner. So many cars were running wide as we see in the background to emphasize my point. And the Camaro and Escort are still fighting side by side. In the end, I'm not sure if the Escort didn't bounce across the curb. Either way, he bumps the side of the Camaro and the Chevy can come out on top with the Escort sadly losing a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, this is a peculiar outer circuit to, uh, to get used to. It's quite a nice one to drive once you have got the hang of it. But yeah, certainly to get used to, we just see a few cars going, uh, going a little bit exploring in this uh, racing situation. This was the fight over second place. Skyline was leading the race by a quite, a, quite a margin uh, yet again. It was the Mazda versus an Audi TT as we leave to rejoin the banking. There's a Skyline going exploring and a uh, Maserati birdcage as well across the grass. The Audi, though, would get to the inside as uh, they run down towards this next really rather tight corner and the Mazda just runs out of road, sticks a wheel on the curb and uh, gets a little bit over to He tries firing it back up the inside side but uh, he can't quite hold on against the uh, the Audi and the Audi would move up into second although that wouldn't last long a mistake would drop the Audi uh, down the order the limo well he started towards the front of the grid but this was never likely to be a track that would particularly suit this uh, kind of vehicle it's a very it's quite a technical circuit and uh, yeah the limo was uh, was struggling uh, a little bit uh, around here, although he was still putting up a fight with another Audi TT as we come towards the end of a, the lap. The limo <laughs> trying to go around the outside. That's a that's a pretty tough manoeuvre to uh, to try and do. He couldn't quite make the uh, move stick, but as we run on towards the main straight, the Audi up ahead would understeer wide and bump the wall. The limo would just about keep it on the uh, the road, would get a better drive down the straight and the limo had some decent straight line speed i was impressed with the <laughs> the speed of this limo in a in a straight line yeah, considering you know what it is that's uh, not bad straight line speed from the car and yeah he would he would pass the audi and the audi had no real answer to it uh, when they came towards a turn one as I said, at the front, it was the Skyline that would go on to take victory. I uh, had an absolutely huge margin over the rest of the field. In the end, the Maserati birdcage would get up to second, with the Mazda coming home in 
third. Uh, they were miles behind. The, the skyline, uh, admittedly, certainly not helped by the fact that they were all fighting for position. The skyline could run in uh, in clean air. And yeah, there were a few off-track excursions from, uh, from pretty much everybody uh, learning that particular layout. Our final race, we would go to the Nürburgring GP circuit in the pouring rain. I I feared my Renault. Uh, my Renault was very, very difficult to drive in, in the dry. I was really worried I was going to have a nigh-on undrivable car come the wet. Uh, turn one was quite slippy, quite slidey, and unfortunately Mazda uh, got turned around in that one. You see me, I had to take to the grass to avoid the accident and pretty much got stuck on the inside of the corner trying to get a safe place where I could rejoin the circuit. This Subaru trying to get up the inside of an Audi that's just about to Subaru's uh, <laughs> worth of width there. He gets all the puddles and just can't quite get it stopped. Ends up in the side of the Volvo. The Volvo uh, gets himself a bit sideways on the exit of the corner. He ends up turned around in front of the on-rushing pack. Amazingly, most cars get through without um, too many <laughs> incidents or with, uh, with cars spinning around. I mean, it's always challenging driving in, in the wet, uh, especially around a, a circuit like this one. There are puddles, nasty puddles on the curves. You know, you want to try and have a dive up the inside or defend your position, but if you run across the puddles with a little bit too much speed, you're going to get in an awful, awful lot of trouble. So, yeah, you've got to be, got to be quite careful. Now, I learned the hard way that uh, sometimes the incredibly light classic race cars are not so good when it comes to wet weather driving, although in A-Class with four-wheel drive, they were faring better. This uh, Alpha TZ2 had a dive up the inside of an Audi TT while a Ferrari <laughs> and uh, another Alfa Romeo were having a fight in the background. Yeah, the, the one downside of the TZ2 is you can't see a bloody thing out of the front if you are running cockpit view because the windscreen wipers are the most useless thing known to man. But uh, yeah, the lightweight race cars were faring better out here. As was my Renault, surprisingly. Now, I was expecting to be in a lot of trouble with the Renault. I built this car and it is immensely fast time trialing. It's a turbo rally engined car. Very, very quick if, it's, uh, if you're doing time trials, but it's very hard to be consistent with it because it is very, very difficult to drive. It took a lot of tuning work as well to stop making it twitchy as hell. So I was expecting to be in quite a lot of trouble in the wet, in all honesty, but that wasn't the case. The Renault 5 was actually quite nice to drive around here. And now you see the uh, the power of the turbo rally engine as the, <laughs> as the Audi TT and Skyline are fighting their way through the chicane. I can drive, take a neater line and simply out-drag them before we get to the hairpin. The two, both of them in one shot. Yeah, the, the torque you get from the turbo rally engine is immense. You do have to change gear at a very early point, earlier than you are used to probably. About five and a half to 6,000 RPM you want to have changed up gear by as I go breezing past an Impreza as well. The straight line speed on the Renault 5 though was immense uh, around here. I keep myself on the inside of the Subaru, but I have to avoid the puddle, which means I take quite a wide line and the Impreza can fight back on the inside. However, he's got no match for <laughs> the engine inside the Renault. I keep it alongside, but I'm still stuck on the outside. And with the puddles, I have to just back off a little bit through here. I end up uh, just losing that uh, little bit of uh, position to the Subaru. The, meanwhile, behind me, the Skyline and the Audi TT, they're still going at it, and the Skyline gets himself up the inside and he's, gets his position back. There was quite a lot of good racing in uh, in this one. One car that was doing uh, surprisingly well, Jeep Cherokee, was fighting his way through the order. He got turned around at the first corner with uh, various bumpings going on behind him. And as the Alpha TZ2 tried to have a go at the inside of an Audi, couldn't quite get it stopped. The Jeep would uh, would get past, and the Jeep was making good progress through the uh, the field. Yeah, you would, probably wouldn't expect it to be a particularly uh, particularly quick car when you know you, you see what it's racing against, but it was actually doing really really rather well. Further back, we had a little bit of a uh, Mitsubishi versus Subaru battle as we run down towards turn one. The Escort was very very early on the brakes, but pretty much everybody else or everybody out. Uh, down there. They go three wide with the Ford stuck with no other option but to go across the puddle. Fires the Escort really rather sideways but he's got the speed to just about keep the position. Now the Mitsubishi is up the inside and uh, will get the position briefly as the Escort <laughs> slides through uh, on the inside and the Escort has got a lot of acceleration. It's around the outside of the Evo. The Subaru is now <laughs> trying to uh, to fight back. 
there was lots of position changes. There was a, a lot of fear, kind of, with the uh, Forza 6 races doing rain races in these, that they'd just become a crash fest. And, you know, sure, a little bit of bumps do happen, as we can see on the front of the Subaru. But, um, yeah, on the most part, there was plenty of good racing. In fact, I think this one had the most good racing out of all of the, uh, the events. Uh, the Subaru has just got the straight line speed on the Evo down here. He's, he was around the outside, but not really got the positioning. He's stuck on the outside for the hairpin. Subaru tries to cut back to the inside. They tag ever so slightly, but um, Subaru can't quite make the move stick, although he did have quite a lot of speed on that Evo. For me, I too was working my way through the field. Uh, it's coming up to the back of a, I would imagine, a rather soggy Ferrari, <laughs> Ferrari California. He defends into the chicane. I know I've got great speed off this chicane, so I don't want to kind of buy into his games and try to run in too deep. I do still get a little bit tangled as the Ferrari was very slow off the chicane. He goes defensive into the final corner. I'm looking around the outside, and we've got to be wary of the Alfa Romeo behind us, uh, but uh, I can't do anything around the outside. I don't, don't have the grip to fight the Ferrari, but I do have the power. I do have the torque out of that final corner. I can find myself up alongside and simply out drag the Ferrari. Yeah, the, the power and torque is immense in the Renault. And then I could defend in towards turn one, make sure the Ferrari can't do very much. And then again, can defend into the next turn because you don't want to be going across the puddle. Like, yeah, like the Ferrari did just there. That's not the line that you want to be taking. You either go to the defensive line on the inside or you take a wide line. And uh, yeah, the, the puddle line is probably where you would normally put the car is not where you want to go in uh, in these conditions further back there was quite a lot of subaru 22b's in uh, in this particular race well i have uh, who knows but uh, yeah these guys were <laughs> fighting amongst themselves they were around with the evo and i mean you can see the you know, the cars were really rather close you got the you got an audi tt you got the evo two subarus there's a, is it a focus i think at the background of the shot the evos having got the inside of the uh, of the Audi, the two Subarus uh, battling <laughs> amongst themselves, and this is the thing: once you start going on the attack, once you start having to defend, you're going to slow yourself down. You see the <laughs> the Audi and the Mitsubishi; they get together, and now both of the 22Bs are going to be joining in the fun as we are drag racing down this back straight. The Subarus swap positions. That corner there was actually a really nasty one in the wet because not all of the cars could quite take it flat out. So we did see a few cars going, escaping the track. The Subaru we're following is trying to get to the inside. He can't quite make it work. However, with a big kick of oversteer, <laughs> the, the other 22B is uh, well, well off the track. Yeah, you get a wheel on the curb or a wheel on the grass and you're in a lot of trouble. At the front of the field, and it was a Mustang King Cobra that would go on to take the victory. Uh, there, I think it was a Lexus, Lexus F in second with the Jeep would get up to third. Again, it was another relatively car started towards the front of the field and managed to get away while the rest of us squabbled. I think the Jeep may have got fastest lap, uh, and I think I got second fastest lap in this one, but we just simply ran out of laps to do anything about catching the uh, the front group. Uh, this was, I think this was for over about 16th and back. This was how, they, how hard they were fighting for 16th, 17th, 18th, and so on. This, gr this group of cars. It really was a, a, quite a fantastic race as we leave the, uh, the chicane. The Evo and Subaru get a little bit of a bump now. Audi TT is now trying to have a look up the uh, the inside. A little bit of lag on the uh, the replay there, unfortunately. On most part, lag hasn't been too bad on uh, on six. The Evo gets into the back of the Audi TT. The Audi just not quite got the speed off the corner, but here comes the Subaru and the other of the TTs. However, they couldn't quite get uh, get any passes done. I mean, that's an incredible finish for, you know, relatively low down the order positions. And that's how, that's how hard the fighting was throughout the field. Yeah, Nürburgring was actually really very good fun. Nürburgring was an awful lot of fun to, uh, to, to race around. My Renault, a great car, it's too hard to drive, too hard to be consistent with it. Uh, it all honestly needs a lot more tuning work than I am capable of, basically, to make that fight. Very, very fast car when you get it right, but incredibly easy to get it wrong. I'd also like to uh, to apologise. There was a lot of connection troubles in this one. I, just, I simply couldn't send out invites to a lot of people. So, yeah, I, I apologise for that. If people didn't get invites who wanted to race, my Xbox decided to have a derpy day and just wouldn't let me send out invites. So, hopefully, that won't happen, uh, ho won't happen again. Uh, however, that is it for this week's Versus the Community. The next one shall be on Thursday, the 22nd of October. We are going to be running open E-Class cars. So any cars 
in E-Class. If you would like to sign up and take part in that event, then you can via our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Faris versus the Community section, and uh, you can sign up in there. But uh, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. Thank you.